Good morning again. For the past four weeks, we've been reviewing the first four chapters of Science of Mind by Dr. Ernest Holmes. This is called The Introduction. And we've had some wonderful talks by Reverend Mary Jo, by Reverend Dar, by Dr. J, by Dr. Uh, Reverend Dr. Cynthia. And I'm going to do a little summary of my own today on the thing itself, the way it works, what it does, and how to use it. And I'm, then I'm going to throw in a few other things. Reverend Dar's assignment for us was to get it. Did you get it this week? Okay. We're going to have a chance to get it some more today, but also to prove it. Remember that this is the science of mind, religious science, in which we can prove what we suspect, what we hope, what we know. As I listened to all the talks, and I did get to listen to all of them, that was great, um, this month, I heard the same thing being said every single time in a variety of ways. And that's how it is. We come to our centers to hear what we already know over and over and over again until we get it. And I loved the variety of ways that it was spoken of. And now it's my turn. And as I was thinking about this talk early in the, earlier in the week, what came to mind was the putting together of a jigsaw puzzle. Are any of you jigsaw aficionados? I'm the only one. OK, well, too bad. You're going to have to listen anyway. <laughs> I was thinking of that as a metaphor for life and also for understanding spiritual principle, that it's about putting it all together. You have a, a picture. It could be 12 pieces in the puzzle. It could be 1,000 in the puzzle. But you have all the pieces mixed up on the card table or wherever you're, you're doing this. And I know all throughout my life I've enjoyed working on these kinds of things. Haven't had a lot of time lately to do it, but I've enjoyed it. And I've noticed that like life, there are different ways of putting the puzzle together. I think probably the one that I see evidenced most often is of pulling out all the edge pieces. Those are easy to identify. They have a flat edge, usually, unless you have one of these new circular um, puzzles. But the flat edges, and then you have a border, and then you have a sense of what might be in here. It's kind of like life, as when we come here and with the first four chapters, we get a sense of what this science of mind might really be. And then we can start filling it in. I know as I do a jigsaw puzzle, and other people do this too, pull together groups of the same color or something that looks like the same texture and, and start putting those things together and still not having a sense of what the whole picture looks like, but eventually those groups of color or those groups of texture start fitting together and you see a bigger picture just like life, just as we understand science of mind. We start getting more ahas, deeper ahas. I found what does not work well is something I've seen a few people do. Let's say that there is a puzzle of more than 12 pieces. And someone comes up to the table and picks up one piece and they hold on to it tightly, and they're going to find where that piece goes. Have you noticed that? Have you seen that? Children sometimes do that, but sometimes the adults do too. And they walk around the table looking, where does that one piece go? Eventually, it will fit. If they hold on to that one piece, 
It will fit, but almost the entire puzzle will have to be put together before that piece goes in. Because oftentimes the piece where it's to go doesn't show up yet. It might be in the pile of colors of peach over here, or in the textures of the stone wall over here. What I have found does work for me in putting together a puzzle is a scanning method. And I think I just started doing it. I'm, I don't remember when it started or why, but I look at the whole thing, and then there are magically, of course. I see something. Oh, that goes over here. Oh, I bet that would fit down here. So I, I find I do a scan, and so the, the intuitive part of me is actually working to put things together, just like in life. If we trust that, if we take a, a bigger view, we will start to be guided to what we need to know next, what's, what our path is. So just as, well, let me back up a minute. If we have a puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle on the table all, in all its pieces, remember that that puzzle was once a full picture. They don't make each piece individually and throw it in a box. They have a big picture, the whole thing already complete, and then they, they do the cutting of the pieces and then throw them in the box. Same with life. We're whole and complete when we start out. And somehow, as we seem to accept that we are human rather than divine, all the wholeness gets put out into different pieces and we spend the rest of our lives trying to put it back together. Let us not hold one piece of our life and wait to see where it fits at the end of our lives. Let's look at the whole thing. Scan it, allow our intuition to guide us and move us into bringing all the pieces back together easily. Because in truth, we're already all together. And so now I'd like to move into the summary or reminder of the first four chapters of the science of mind. The thing itself, God, you all knew that. It is that principle that knows no restrictions and no limitations. It is love, life, light, peace, power, beauty, joy, and more. And it is that power for good everywhere, all the time. So we already know that. But I would ask you, how many of you really identify that as you? The thing itself, as you. That's the second step of treatment. The first is God is, the second is I am. And it's the same thing. Different sides of the same coin, you could say. But how many of us still kind of talk about the thing itself as a little bit out there? God is a little bit out there because if I say I am God, even if I say I am God individualized as Jane, is there something in me that still feels like, ooh, that's a little bit self sacrilegious or that's a little bit not proper or how could I be that? 